Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Outpost. Quite a few things happened in this episode. Obviously, we have Talent and Jonzo returning from their journey and letting Eleanor know that. Which is interesting because Eleanor was just kind of like, oh, you did it. Oh, my favorite Jonzo, you're the greatest, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, but that was all after I came back until I told you like how much... We got we got three times as much, or at least three loads, like more than what we were supposed to initially get. And you know, it's like, yeah, I see that you weren't really concerned about my health either, my well being. Well, it turns out the people behind this were gray skins. Ah, who cares? It's like, mom, you should care because it's gray skins. John so he brought up some good points. It's like they didn't even bother counting the gold. Isn't that a little suspicious? I didn't even think about that. They just that's why they were like, cause Jonzo was like, oh, they're paying too much. I was like, we'll just leave the other bag in town. I was like, no, you take that damn bag and we go. So it's kind of like, yeah, well, shouldn't you be a little suspicious that they're the ones giving out the collapsum? Part of me is wondering, do you think that has something to do with the spread of um the plaguing virus. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Because the fact of the matter is Garrett didn't consume any. He was drinking, wasn't it? Because that was something Talon was talking about later on. The fact is that he wasn't taking any collapsum like most people were. Like, that might actually aggravate the infection or something like that. Like, those two things might be tied together. But we don't know, how like, how widespread collapsum is. That's at least my initial thought. Because it's like, why would the Grayskins do that? Why would you bother, like, making deals with humans? Because he could, um, t uh, dang, uh, Jonzo said it himself, it's like, they're the enemies of humans, but for Eleanor, she doesn't care, it's all about business and stuff like that, which she did also such a shitty thing of, like, oh, a better son, better man would have gotten, like, ten loads instead, and then he puts a hand on the mirror, it's like, well, I'll keep that in mind next time, you can send Munt, and walks away and gets a little pissed at her, and then Eleanor's like, oh, look how much that boy's growing, I guess in her own twist, it's like, look at him standing up to me, he's so... It's crazy to see how much she's changed and grown, essentially, so I guess that's her own way of being proud of him and twist away. But that kind of whole thing makes me think, like, the gray skins must be up to something. Like, this whole plaguing virus might be their concoction as a means of wiping out humans. Uh, and just, they don't ever really... I mean, they don't really know where Calypsum really comes from. I mean, besides being supplied by the gray skins, but it's like... I mean, it's a drug that we don't really know too much about. We've seen a little bit kind of as the background. So that's why I'm kind of wondering, like, is it going to be, you know, turn out to be. That's why I was feeling like the storyline is going to grow and turn into something much bigger. But for now, we'll just have to wait and see. But like I said, those are just my initial thoughts. But along with all this is the whole aspect of Garrett being a plagueling. And everyone's, you know, reaction to that. Like, Talon's like, no, 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 no. He doesn't have to die because he makes Talon... Like, it's like, hey, promise me you have you will kill me if the time comes. John's was all for it because it's just kind of like, uh, who doesn't care? Like, he's always kind of, like, pissed at Garrett anyway, but Garrett's also super drunk. It's kind of interesting because we learn a little bit more about Plaguelings in the sense of it can t usually it's around the third day that they turn, but it takes about, it could take about six days. But there is, like, a one out of 13 of people, people who don't turn. Which are very, very low odds, which is interesting. That's at least Jonzo's best guess in the grand scheme of things. So, uh, Rosman shows up and she's threatening Jonzo. It's like, oh, if he dies, you die. And he's like, I can't do my work if she's here threatening me. Um, I did like that this episode did kind of bring Talon and Rosman back together. Because even the entire time I keep referring to her as Gwen. Because I guess like she's still under the alias of Gwen. But it's like I need to, need to kind of remind myself to keep calling her Rosman. But the fact of the matter is she um, she and Talon do have a lot of comments. Like, oh yeah, we are both a f one of few women in this whole town of the outposts surrounded by men. Two, we both had both our families murdered by the Prime Order. Three, we both have powers we never wished for. And three... For we have a destinies that will most likely be the death of us, you know, so. But I think when it's all said and done, like, and then she admits, like, and we're also both in love with Garrett. What? No, what? No, it's like, I can tell, like, the fact of the matter is the thought of him dying hurts you as much as it does me. So it's kind of like, if he survives it, we'll figure it out then and there. But for now, it's like, know that I am your friend and we'll get through this together, you know? So that is kind of sweet, because Talon doesn't really have many people, like, Jonzo, Garrett, and Rosman are the only people she has in her life, you know? She had the blacksmith, so...
But uh, I thought that was just kind of nice, you know? I mean, because it also works in Rosman's uh, favor, too, because she doesn't have any uh, real friends. Also, what's interesting, there was that, her new servant, that, like, the moment she opened the door, she looked at Jonzo, she was like, oh, uh, hi. Like, part of me was wondering, like, one of two things. One, I'm like, oh, adding in another love interest into this very complicated love situation because there's the whole talent thing. Because then there's the Garrett and Jonzo thing. But then there's, like, the Garrett and um, Rosman or the Gwen thing. And then it's like, if you add another person into that, that'd just make a whole complication. But there was also another part of me that was like, but you don't think the twist is going to be that that's his twin sister or something, do you? I mean, because I was like, I was like, if that was his sister, he'd know, right? Well, I mean, would they know? Because I don't remember when he was telling his story to Talon. Like, he never gave specific ages. So I'd assume he was, like, fairly young when him and his sister were gotten by um, Eleanor and then she sold his sister off. So I don't know if they ever specified age, but I don't know. That was just something that was kind of floating in the back of my mind. But it does seem like it might also just be like a, oh, another potential love interest type of situation. I don't know. I mean, she seemed like she kind of glowed a little bit, like that smile across her face, like, oh, hello, type of hello, and just, John's just kind of like, hi. You know, because, you know, he's only got eyes for talent right now, so. Which, now they know where the book is, uh, Garrett wants to come along. He's had, uh, rat poison put inside of his body as a means of trying to kill the plaguing. Uh, it's kind of interesting how it works, too. It's like, oh, yeah, like, it crawls up, it wraps its tentacles around your brain is kind of how the infection kind of works in this regard. I guess that's why it's a whole, like, stab you in the mouth thing. Maybe it's, like, disconnecting the brain stem. Like, I guess that's kind of, like, the deal. It's almost like zombie rule, sure, but it's, like, it's never, like, a direct, like, I mean, because I guess... It's wrapped around your brain and it comes out your mouth, but the fact of the matter is, like, the, the the parasite itself inside you, when it manifests itself like that, is what you're really aiming for when you're trying to kill. So it doesn't necessarily work on the, work on the same zombie rules, but to a certain extent, maybe it does. Like I said, maybe it is kind of connected to the whole, oh, cut off the brain stem thing. Which is also interesting because there's a whole killjoy situation with Holland and stuff like that. It's just, it's just funny fat, uh, thing you can't you know, compare to, you know, watching both shows and everything. But nevertheless, um... But I love that the whole, like, Garrett and Jonzo situation back and forth. Because you can tell every little conversation is bugging e each other about the whole thing. Because Jonzo's like, no, 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 you're not going along with Garrett because Garrett's infected. I have, you know, you know, he's, he's, he's not really keen on going on adventures and stuff like that. But he's not going to leave Talon alone with Garrett. And also because Garrett is Garrett. And I just think he just naturally, you know, there's that animosity there. And I really love it. Um... Especially when he saves them from that gray skin with the acid. It's like, oh, you had that acid. What did you have that acid for? No, it's not important. No, like, it's very important to me. You were going to pour it on me, weren't you? And it's like, yes, I was going to use it for you. It's like, oh, it worked out in the end, but still. So what were you going to do? Pour it on my flesh and let it burn away like it did that gray skin? Of course not. Don't be silly. I was going to pour it down your throat. You wouldn't have felt it. Maybe. I don't know. Like, I love that that's his answer to everything this episode. I don't know. Maybe. Possibly, probably not. He's very pessimistic in the grand scheme of things. But I think on some level, it's also because of just Garrett's situation that makes him pessimistic, where he's kind of like, eh, something happened to you, Garrett, I wouldn't be too broken up about it. You know, so why? Because you're less competition. You know, it's just kind of like the things, because like there was that little innuendo between him and um, Talon, where Talon was like, oh, he's like, you have to, you know, uh, chain me up, you have to tie me up, and she's like, oh, I bet you say that to all the ladies, and they're laughing, and you just have Johns over there, you see him rolling his eyes, because he just hates it, I just love it, which is also interesting, because, like, Talon and him are about to kiss and everything, but he's like, no, I don't want, to, I don't want to get you infected, and she's like, sure, hey, are you, you're sure that's what this is all about, it's like, oh, look at him, he's kind of being a di big disappointment, it's kind of interesting, especially consider. I guess she's a little bit more forthcoming about how she feels, and Garrett's the one that's kind of a little more reserved. Uh, even though you mad made out with Rosman, it's just a complication of the situation because he's in love with her, and it's also. But I think there's a part of him that loves Talon too, because I think there's probably part of him that thinks like his his love life with Talon would be more of a possibility than it would be Rosman. You know, but I think it is also just the aspect of like, oh, I, like he finds them both fascinating and both cares about them both very deeply. So it's just complicated, typical love triangle inside the situation. So, but I love to bother him. Uh, like Jonzo gave him the blankets and stuff like that. And Jonzo explains himself. It's like, well, he might die like tomorrow. So it's kind of okay that, you know, we give him a blanket. But then like 
Talon snuggles up to him and everything, and you can tell it bothers Garrett, which partially, it's like, it's partially good under his skin, but it's also because she's freezing, and she's like, I could stop if you want, and John's just like, no, grabs her arm and wraps it around him, and he's super happy about it and everything, and it just, like, bothers Garrett to no end, so, like I said, I love the beauty of that, like, whole trio situation. What also kind of surprised me was the fact is that uh, Dana was brought in by Rosamond because she was like, because she was trying to figure out whether he was the one that Withers left the letters to and stuff like that. But once again, like it still ended up getting to him anyway to dread. So it's like, did he send those off before he got locked up or did someone else kind of do that? Or did Dano do that and he's trying to play innocent or coy? I don't know. But it was also the aspect, well, no, because I forgot, none of that about Rosman came out, only the stuff about talent, so that's kind of its own thing, uh, that's kind of something else, so n never mind, I'll take back what I was saying. But it is kind of interesting, at no point in time has he tried to take advantage of the situation, is what Gwen was saying, because it's like, you know what you know as well, but you've never tried to threaten me or anything, but it's also because, and you always bow when you see me, so you show respect, unlike Weathers. Who did his own thing, which kind of show respect, but, you know, respect out of the fact is like, oh, I have power over you and yada, yada, yada. So the question then becomes like, you know, why hasn't Dano said anything? But I guess it's also because we end up finding out the reason why he's mute is because a chancellor from the prime order tried to make advances on his wife. And because he spoke up about it, he got an iron, a hot iron stuck inside his throat and burned him. Which is like super messed up because he was forcing himself on um his um they uh the chancellor was forcing himself on his wife, which is like damn dude, just like does everyone in power and position suck in this world? Like holy shit, there's always something like that. Cause like a very similar thing happened with like um Garrett and his mom situation, you know. So it's kind of just a shitty situation all around, like. And you just see it more and more with each passing time. Like, yeah, just the way they, the people in the Prime Order just kind of run things. It's like, yeah, you're just kind of shitty people in general, aren't you? But nevertheless, um, so now Dano's going to be her eyes and ears, which I'm thinking that's going to come in handy even more going forward. Just because, like, you know, you know, he'll, he'll gather information for her, but I guess he'll kind of be, like, there for Because, like, together in this, we're in this together because, like, we both want revenge against the Prime Order. I mean, oh, like, Withers should have taken this opportunity to try and um, work with them. Considering the fact that you think after everything that happened with uh, his wife that you think, or, you know, Garrett's mom, that you would think you'd be all about trying to go up against the Prime Order. But I guess it's like, he likes his position in Bauer and he's not trying to compromise that even though he doesn't like the prime order it would have complicated things so i'm sure maybe that's another reason behind the whole thing anyway um it's just like he's just kind of obsessed with his own power and he doesn't want that to get jeopardized you know, whatever uh, which is interesting, too, because he's trying to make his escape this episode, but uh, Seal stops him because he's like, oh, let the lady know that, what, that you love her? It's like, no, that, that I cared about her, which is kind of crazy because, you know, she does, sadly, she doesn't care about you. Like, it kind of seems like she doesn't care about anybody except for herself because everybody is just a means to an end to her. But it's like, hey, he cares about her. And then that l ends with Seal losing her knife, and she's like, man, that was my best knife, too. Uh, because he was planning on escaping, because the thing is, we don't know why Eleanor has her there, because it's like, Syl's been there for like 11 years and stuff like that, so it's kind of like, what are you getting out of this? Like, what could you be doing for Eleanor, and what do you get out of it that you would be willing to do it, that you're willing to stay in here to do whatever? It's like importing stuff for her, whether you're sneaking stuff in or sticking stuff out, is it materials from the mind? Like, what's going on with that? But uh, Seal convinces him to stay because it's like, oh, yeah, if you if you uh, leave, there'll be questions about where you went. And then, like, they'll end up getting this route closed because they'll be like, oh, there must be another way out of the mines. And that'll screw over Eleanor. But you care about Eleanor, right? And so he's like, fine, I'll stay for now, which is kind of, like I said, the whole situation's weird. So I'm curious to see what they ultimately do with all of that whole uh Maybe we'll find out soon enough what Eleanor has planned, and maybe that'll kind of circle back around and got on plan to the plot in some shape or form. We also had the whole situation with S. We kind of see... Essa, I'm sorry. We run into her a little bit this episode. She's eating a gray skin. She kills a gray skin because she, she's looking for the book, and the book turns out to be in gray skin territory. It's also interesting, too, because... um. 
the fact of the matter is uh Jonzo had brought it up like the walls weren't built by men some people believe they might have been gray skins others kind of think lakiri but the fact of the matter is um talon's like no way which in fact i think she kind of doesn't give them as much credit as they are which i think kind of implement like implies that the lakiri are very very old they might have existed longer than anything else the way that kind of makes it seem like but i mean we won't really know for sure because a lot of the curious past is you know hit shrouded in secrecy too you know so but the fact is that essa was eating it because like the moment she started cutting off and like i'm like is she about to eat that totally is i guess it's just kind of like whatever her deal is or you know it's like i wouldn't think eating gray skin would be possible maybe she just doesn't care maybe by eating people or eating things that she kills she gains their strength maybe that's kind of like her whole deal so it seemed like gray skin that was the first time she ever tasted it i mean to be fair it's kind of a deserty area so it's probably like hot and cold and it's like you probably haven't eaten anything so i don't know or maybe it is that simply like as a warrior you absorb those you eat and consume that could be another possibility but who knows? The fact is they made such a point about it is kind of what I'm, I think is kind of interesting. But nevertheless. Um, another interesting thing that came up this episode I thought was fascinating was the whole Dread situation. Once again, that little girl. like she, when I said it before and I'll say it again. She does not seem too keen on this aspect. Because it's like, oh, you don't like the fact is that I'm willing to do all of this. It's like the fact of the matter is like... I'm doing this for the sake of the world, for others, for those to live, because if the black blood lives, it spreads death and pestilence around the world, which, once again, the blacksmith has never said anything about that, let's point that out, his, once again, his, like, thing was like, oh, the new, the, the, um, leaders of old will basically fall, kind of representing the prime order would fall, so it's kind of like, is he misconstruing that to get the girl's help in all of this or you know trying to justify it or does the fact of the matter is does he know more about the prophecy than the blacksmith slash you know wolf did i mean to be fair you would think he would have come up with something like something like that would have come up he would have warned her the way he was talking about oh, i'm gonna do a little good it makes you go like he never either that's something that you know I'm leaning more towards Dread using that as propaganda. Like, why specifically for that little girl? Like, what her whole role in all of this is? I have no idea. You don't think it's some twisted thing of, like, killing her off so that the little girl can be the last one to have to look. Like, I don't know. Like, is she supposed to be a black blood, too? Is that what the twist is going to be? Like, because he wants only one black blood to exist, and that's one under his control. Because we still have no idea why such a little girl is, like, there by his side. Like, not unless she's... Of some importance. I don't know. It doesn't seem like she's his daughter necessarily. Maybe she is. But it seems like she's important in some shape or form. To this whole prime order thing. Like I said. We still don't. Haven't seen all like the higher ups. Because like the chancellor that was mentioned. Never saw that. We never. Like like I said. He's the ambassador. So it's like. Who's above him. And you know. Dread. So there's so much in that regard. That we still don't know about the hierarchy of the prime order. So. Maybe that girl's higher position or something. Maybe she's the daughter of someone in a higher position. I, I I have no idea what her whole deal is. But the fact is Dredd said all that made me go, I think you're beating, BSing around. I mean, maybe that's the BS that he fed the top people. That this isn't about some prosperity. That this will be some destruction and death that follows. Maybe that's kind of what he told everyone. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it is simply the fact this wolf, you know. Because it is information not everyone can get access to. Like, the Prime Order made sure that no one will be able to find any of this information. So, most likely, like... If the wolf tried looking for anything, a lot of that might have been sealed away. So he only got the good bits of the prophecy, not the bad bits. Maybe. Who knows? What is crazy is he shows up at the end of the episode, Dread does, and pops up at the um, outpost. Which I guess works out in a sense because, well, Talon isn't there right now. So that'd be a con. I mean, she'd probably be all about trying to take on Dread right now if she knew he was there. So she doesn't have the book of names, which that was kind of another reason why Garrett went along. Because like if I go along, which I have a potentially a limited amount of time, if I go along, I can make sure that you guys are okay and also get the book of names, which could be helpful in Rosman's war. Um, but because obviously he's not here about Rosman, he's here about Talon. Uh, what's crazy and sad is when the gates get open, he ends up killing Calcazar because he knows. That there's more to this situation. Like, I can't remember, like, I think he knew that, um, 
Calcazar was lying to him about the whole situation. It's like, yeah, my men that never came back. Yeah, you had something to do with that. I know you did. Or maybe this ties into like, oh, you're hiding the black blood. You knew about this whole situation and yet you never said anything. Because not just the people that were to pick up the weapons, but also the bones died. It's like they died and you said nothing about that either. You know, so like I said, he still doesn't know about Rosman, but still. I'm thinking that basically her... Dano and her servant are going to get out of town and probably try and track down Garrett, um, John Zoe, and um, Talon to kind of meet up. But we'll kind of have to wait and see whether that ends up being the case or not. But uh, they are going to go through town and cut every lady in down so until they can find the black bullet. So like I said, maybe in a sense it works out that she's not there, but poor Calcazar died. I wasn't expecting that. For him to just run up and stab him like that, like... Ooh. Especially because they made such a big deal that he could still, you know, good with a sword that he could still handle himself. So that's why I was thinking he was going to be sticking around for a while. But I guess also because they made the whole point to make you go like, oh yeah, like, Gwen still thinks of Calcazar as her dad. And the fact of the matter is, it's like, you should probably stop calling me, you know, your dad now. But she's like, no, you'll always be my dad. Like, they made such a point that it should have been like, oh yeah, he's going to die soon. I would expect it, like, when the fighting starts or something. But I wouldn't expect it to go down just like that. It just, it's kind of sad. And she had to witness it. So the only potential family she had left, the man that was like a father to her for so long, the man who sacrificed so much for her is going now too. So it's like all of her family is going and it's just, so heartbreaking, you know? Now that Dread is here in the outpost, I'm very interested to see how this all ends up playing out. Obviously, you know, Jonzo, Talon, and Garrett search for uh, the Book of Names, how that will turn out. Um, also, what's going to happen to Garrett? I'm kind of thinking it's like, oh, Garrett's not going to be... Um, he's not going to get worse at what... Jonzo did will heal him. I mean, you never know. They might twist it around where it's like, oh no, he's definitely infected. But like I said, the whole collapsing thing might turn out to be like a leading factor in it. Like I said, another aspect we'll kind of have to wait to see. So I'm very interested to see what goes down in the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Until so the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the force, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.